Hello everyone, welcome to the Study Hacks Institute of GIS and Remote Sensing. Today I will try to discuss a very important topic, mainly how we can easily monitor the land use land cover classification using Sentinel-1 SAR data. I will try to explain all of method and I hope after completing this full tutorial, you are able to do make land use land cover mapping using Sentinel-1 SAR data. So there's a lot of benefit to use the Sentinel-1 SAR data for making the land use land cover classification. So first of all, uh, all weather monitoring. Basically, Sentinel-1 SAR operate in the microwave spectrum, which allow it to capture data regardless of weather condition, such as more cloud cover, foggy, or any other time of day, we can easily access the satellite imagery, as well as it also provide the vegetation and urban area monitoring using SAR data can be easily distinguished between the different land cover types such as water, vegetation, buildup based on their backscatter characteristics. As well as it also complement optical data. We can also compare alongside with optical data to enhance the land use land cover classification accuracy and particularly in the area of with the frequent cloud cover region. So basically this is one kind of region so here we don't find the cloud free imagery so all time there the cloud formation happened so for this type of region when you want to use the landsat imagery or sentinel imagery then you face a lot of problem you find out lot of cloudy pixel as well as you cannot get the more uh correct classified you cannot classify it for land use land cover so you can see if you see the google satellite map you can also get a lot of cloud also here you can see so that's why when you also try to work with uh, Landsat or Sentinel-2 satellite imagery, then you get a lot of cloud cover and it also hampered your result. So that's why it also better to use microwave spectrum, basically SAR data, and then we can easily create the land use land cover classification for this type of cloudly region. So basically, I will try to explain how we can easily create so first of all this is my study area so for this study area i want to need the sentinel one sar data which provide me the microwave spectrum mainly vv vs this type of spectrum i can easily get from here so here you can see here i already imported my satellite imagery so this is the sentinel one sar data so this data i already imported in here so this data provide me the microwave spectrum which allow it to capture data regardless of weather condition. So now you can see there are not any kind of cloud, any kinds of fog, any kind of um, noisy pixel are not available. Okay, so that's why it's very uh, useful for the cloud cover area. So basically, this is the data, and this data mainly Sentinel One SAR data, and this data is available from year of 2014 to 2024, 10, 13, October. So, and this data provided is the European Union ES Copernicus. So, I want to use the data and create the land use land cover classification. So, first of all, just simply import your uh, image collection. I simply import the image collection. And further, I simply filter my image collection in here. So, I take the transmitter receiver polarization, VV, and also take the VIs. So, both of them I try to take in here. And here I use the orbit properties pass as a descending. If you want, you can also use the ascending. So I want to make this work for using the descending. And further, I create the median composite. Okay. So now I create this type of median composite. So basically, between this time period, all of MS, I create the middle pixel value and create this type of median composite imagery. So from this imagery, we can also use the different types of fan combination. So if you click on here, and here you can see, if I just use at this uh, VV, then put here the VS and also put here the VV and I just flew under stressing 98% so now it provides me one kind of uh, band combination VV, VS and VV so then I can easily get this type of uh, band combination so we got this type of color is the water body as well as we find out the urban feature this type of uh, gray color or this type of uh, white color we can easily identify you can see this type of is the urban or build up okay as well as if you just put here the uh, vs then put here the vv 
and also put at the VS and stressing 98% savings. I just put and further just apply. So now it also provide me the another band combination. So from where we can easily identify for water body, this type of black color or dark color integrating the water body, as well as we also get the urban feature. This type of uh, white color in, in, uh, is the urban feature, as well as you can also get the vegetation. Okay, so if you want to check this type of things. So if I simply zoom in, then you can get that urban green space area. We can also identify from here. Okay, and this is the water body. We can easily identify. So you just use the different types of um, band combination, and it also better if you can also overlay the Sentinel one, one Sentinel two satellite imagery, and then for, further you just use the different types of band combination and take the training sample. So in this case, I take the training sample for the water body. So for this area, as well as the build up, I also take the water uh, for the build up and barren land, and also take for the vegetation. Okay, so I take this type of training sample, and further I just apply the machine learning algorithm, and then I classify the land use, land cover mapping. So if you check for the classification result, so just I try to open it here. So just I already make this map. So this is the yeah. So we find out this type of map. So here a uh, uh, blue color indicating about that uh, water body and further this type of green color indicating about the vegetation and red color indicating about that a uh, build up build up region and further also yellow color indicating about the barren land okay so this is one kind of land use land cover mapping using sentinel one sir data so now what's the question what is the accuracy of this map so for that we also calculate the accuracy for this map so we can easily calculate the cup accuracy or producer accuracy or consumer accuracy so then we can easily check the accuracy okay so in this case we try to apply here the random forest classifier and now i want to check the accuracy about that and before that calculating the accuracy we have to just spill the data some data we, we try to use for train our model and some data we try to use for check our validation so for that i just take a variable suppose uh, i put the variable name is that data set and i call my training data so this data is simply spilled into two way suppose i want to use randomly so just put here the random random column and further just take the data for train set so just i call the data set and further just filter this data randomly 80% and take another test set and I call my data set and I want to filter it randomly rest of the 0 0.8 okay so now this train set i want to use to train my model and further i want to just calculate the accuracy suppose i calculate the confusion matrix confusion matrix and i want to calculate the confusion matrix so just put here the confusion matrix function and then call your rest of the 20% data and connecting with your model. Okay, just I simply call and connecting. So for that, use that the classify function for connecting your model, which you created already. And then these things find out from here the error matrix. And in this error matrix, we try to find out the actual value. Actual value basically in this time a class because when I take the training sample, I put it at the class and predicted value just put at that um, classification. All right, so not any of that. So now further print this confusion matrix and click the run. So now we create a confusion matrix. From here, we can easily find out that 
pixel value, correctly classified pixel value, and wrong classified pixel value. We find out in here. So basically, 25, 61, 5, 24 is the correctly uh, pixel classified pixel, and 2, 5, 17, 3, 1 is the wrong classified pixel. So we try to calculate the accuracy. So just print uh, your contribution matrix and put here the accuracy. So now it computed what the accuracy can get from here. It computed, we can easily find out from here. So it find out the 80% accuracy. So this accuracy is not much good, but further, if you want, you can also add here the more different types of things, such as add the more external band, as well as also add here the different types of, you can also check the training sample, then it also provide you the more better accuracy. Okay, so there's a lot of way, as well as also hyperparameter turning, so we, are, we can use the different way to increasing the accuracy as well as they also check your every training sample then we can easily get the more better accuracy so now this is our map here you can see we got this type of map so basically here we find out this type of yellow color it's that uh, your barren land green color indicating about the vegetation and yellow color barren land and red color is the build up okay so we can easily classify it using central one server data but if you want to use the Lancer or Sentinel for this place, you don't find the less cloud cover image is not here. So all of cloudy image, including your land use land cover and destroy your land use land cover recent. So it's a very easy way. If you want, you can also try to apply it for your own study area. We have a lot of cloud, okay? Then you can easily apply this type of center one star data and make the land use land cover classification map. Okay, so if you have any question or any doubt about that, you can simply ask in the video the comment. I'll try to give the answer. And if you want to join my upcoming online training program, so basically this class will be start from next week, Friday, mainly 18 October. And our registration is all ongoing. Okay, so now only few seats are available for our upcoming online training program. This class will be start from the 18 October. And if you want to join this online training program, you can easily learn all of those things from beginners to advanced level on Google Earth Engine. So basically in this online training program we try to focus for beginners who don't have any knowledge about the google earth engine or javascript programming or python programming or totally zero knowledge so here you can check all of details for our upcoming online training program syllabus or course content uh, you can easily get it all of those things from the video description i already added the uh, the website link in the video description simply check it and when you want to join our online training program you can get some benefits such as you can get the course e certificate after submitting all of assignment, you can get the all of materials, mainly slide, PDF. You can get all of practice code as well as also get the recorded class. And best thing is that you also get the lifetime teaching support. It's very important because as a beginner, when you want to learn the Google Earth Engine or cloud-based platform, you face a lot of problem. So that's why you need the continuous support. So after completing the total seven days online training program, when you face any problem regarding any issue, you can get the lifetime free teaching support regarding this online training program. So don't waste your time. Try to join as soon as possible and book your seat and see you in the class. So today is no more. Thank you for watching that. Stay happy, stay safe.